Welcome to another In Wheel Time podcast, a 30-minute mini version of the In Wheel Time car show that airs live every Saturday morning, 8 to 11 a.m. Central. From the Sugar Shack Studios in Texas, USA, it is the In Wheel Time Car Talk Show. Coming up, we announce the very special car that we'll have in the In Wheel Time booth at Autorama this year with the owner of said car, Mr. Jim Tilly. We'll also have the upcoming events calendar. Mr. Mars reviews the redesigned Jeep Compass. And later, a special segment with standout stories. That's good. Did you write that? <laughs> did you read that before you read it? I did. I, I wrote it. But I just wanted to... It didn't flow. Well, I paused just for a moment for effect, emphasis. Effect. Yeah, effect. So, at any rate, all that and more coming up in this hour, or half hour, depending on whether or not you're going to download a podcast later on. Oh, yeah. But this is a live show, so in the next hour, you'll hear that and more. Howdy, and- along with Mike out of this world, Mars, who's on the phone with our guest, who's trying to dial in right now. Uh, King Conrad DeLong is here. Mm-hmm. Thank you for being here. I appreciate you having me. Yes, always. Letting me in the sugar shack. In the sugar shack. And uh, Mr. Jeffrey, we always need more Jeff Zegan. Mm-hmm. I'm Don Armstrong, or not. (laughs) Because nobody else wants to be. That's for sure. They do not want to be me. But uh, at any rate, uh, so we have, are we going to be able to do this, Mr. Morris? Yeah, give him a minute here. Give him a minute. Give him a minute. minute. So in the meantime and in between time, we're going to move on with the show and and let Mr. Mars worry about, let me turn him. There you go. Let Mr. Mars let Mr. Mars worry about getting our guest lined up, which should have happened about ten minutes ago, but didn't. But at any rate, so I'm going to read you a little story. Okay. And um, you may or may not know of this name, mm-hmm. but perhaps you do. And the gentleman that we're talking about, his name, his real name is Norm Kraus. He passed away in February of 2021, and this story was written. Right before then. Mm -hmm. So uh, just have to keep that in mind. So here's the story from Hemmings, uh, Hemmings Hemmings.com. Ready? Yep. Perhaps no one was responsible for more sales of Dodge performance vehicles during the muscle car era than Norm Krause, also known as Mr. Mr. Norm. Norm. As the co-owner of Grand Spalding Dodge in Chicago from 1962 to 1977, His focus on high performance helped it become the biggest Dodge dealership in the world. Hmm. Norm and his brother Len, his co-owner, got their start selling used cars as teenagers in the late 1940s from their father's gas station. Making just three cents per gallon pumping gas and cleaning windshields, they wanted something more. At the suggestion of a customer, quote, my brother and I went out and bought a bagel, a cheap car, recounts Norm. Mm -hmm. We brought it back and put it in the corner of the gas station, cleaned it up, and sold the car the next day and made $60 on it. So, with a steady business, the brothers broke through in the late 1950s when they sold a 1956 Chevy convertible with a V8 and a manual transmission. Paying by the character for a classified ad, they squeezed in Quote, call Mr. Norm, end quote, which soon became a signature for the business. But the car itself proved very popular. The next morning, Norm says, I must have had 25 calls. By 10 a.m., I had already delivered it. By 11, my brother, who was out buying cars, called me, and I said, do not buy a regular car again. Buy all four speeds. We got an education in performance from our customers. We got so well known in the Chicago area That's when Dodge came in. In the fall of 1962, still with only a small office and no real showroom, Grand Spalding Dodge opened. At just 28 years old, Norm Krause was the youngest Dodge dealer in the country. Hmm. I think the first month we sold about 35 cars, Norm says. Wow. From that day on, it was totally performance. As one of the first dealers to install a dynamometer, Grand Spalding was able to properly tune their customers' cars, which were notoriously detuned from the factory. 
The first 383 we put on our dyno registered 180 horsepower, says Norm. I said, what the hell's going on here? Let's set it up and see what you'll do. With a little work, they were able to get that 383 to make a reliable 325 horsepower, wow. Norm said. And he made a quick decision. That's going to be done on every car that goes out of our door. Every high-performance customer is going to get a free dyno tune. When we sold a high-performance car, we had the car dynoed right in front of the customer. That's cool. When a minor sponsorship one weekend turned into five sales by Wednesday, on Thursday, Norm was ready to go racing. Not wanting to compete against his customers, he decided to build a match race car. He said, our first 1964 supercharged car became one of the first funny cars in the country because we went out racing. We were running against all the gassers and the rails. There weren't any funny cars back then. The 1965 X Factory lightweight car allowed them to run well into the eights when the competition was in the nines, wow. putting Mr. Norm on the map nationwide. So with their booming performance business, Grand Spalding was selling cars and parts all over the country. People from as far away as Alaska came to buy Mopars. Such was Norm's influence. He could single-handedly get Chrysler to produce a new model. When Chrysler said that a big block dart was impossible, Norm had his top mechanic stuff a 383 into one, and he drove it to the Detroit area to prove it could be done. Thus was born the Dart GTS. The following year, he asked Chrysler to build him a 440 Dart. They built 50 for him, which he was easily able to sell as the Dart GSS for Grand Spalding Sport. Hmm. The Krauss brothers grew their business into the largest Dodge dealer in the world, selling trucks, vans, and standard cars, along with the high-performance models. When others were turning away the younger crowd, Grand Spalding courted them. The competition didn't want to deal with a young fellow. If I caught a salesman playing games with a kid, his ass was in trouble. That was a quote. In 1977, Norm sold his share of the dealership, which closed within a couple of years. Still in his 40s, he wanted to spend more time with his family, something not possible when on the showroom floor from Monday through Friday and then at the racetrack on weekends. He later had a furniture business on the site of one of the dealership buildings and then sold used cars again in the past 20 years now mind you this story was written before he died mm -hmm. he's worked with his performance west group to market newer products that use his name under license he still gets out to shows where the mr norm persona still draws fans mr norm he explains was an image that was built into the dealership when I walked out at the end of the day, I wasn't Mr. Norm anymore. I was Norm Krause. I learned to be a humble winner in the, on the track and a gracious loser. I'm just glad I didn't have to be gracious too much. Wow. And There's a lot of questions. Think of how much, how much fun Chicago must have been back then because Dickie Harrell was in Chicago as yeah. well. Well, and not only that, but was it, was it a regional thing? Because he seems like... He started this, and then it started to expand, so he kind of stepped into it with his knowledge and, of course, his business sense, his business acumen on that. Chicago started it, and it, and it grew, well, I'm sure. And, and proof of concept, because he knew that there was so much untapped horsepower in the vehicles that were detuned from yeah, the factory. Exactly. And being the only one out there that was willing to stand up and say, you want to come watch me make horsepower with your car? Watch me on the dyno. Eight-second quarter mile. What Back in then 1960, exactly. <laughs> you can't do that today. No, without safety and fire equipment and helmets and you and know. that that was in the pre funny car days. Those yeah. were called AFX cars, altered factory experimentals, and he was getting them from Chrysler. How cool! Well, no, that? he was creating them. Yeah, and all of that, all of that really came out of the post World War II era when the guys mainly out in California. Uh, were hot rodding their cars, mm -hmm. and that movement spread across the country really quickly. That actually, the to the hot rodding aspect in California, were uh, veterans from the Air Force started that because they were using the belly tanks and they knew how to tune a rotary engine at high altitude. 
So they took that knowledge, made their own parts, brought it back down to earth, Created started more their, exactly. But it was a lot of the Air Force people that actually started in the hot rod. I watched a show on it not very long ago that that was the birth, Origin. so to speak. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, and Mr. Norm's definitely got you know in the Mopar world, his name is top of the line. Yeah. You know, you know, we talked before the show. You know, that was uh, you know. Dickie Harrell, the Yanko, the Baldwin. See, I'm an East Coaster, so Baldwin yep. Motion was out of Long Island, New York. Harrell out of Chicago. Oh, forget about it. Dickie uh, or, uh, Yanko was Cannonville, Pennsylvania, suburbs, I think of. All up there in the, Philly, yeah, northeast, the northeast. Yeah, northeast, yeah. Uh, Philly. So each of those regional guys became a name. And today at a Mecham or to Barrett Jackson auction, those cars are are priceless almost you know though people are going to pay money for them but those cars with that kind of a heritage are highly desirable in the auction world. so needless to say we don't have jim tilly with us uh, on the line yeah. mr mars is still working on that but um i'm going to tell you right now that jim tilly uh, drum roll. has a 1965 dodge coronet 500 with a 426 wedge in it. You want to pull it up? It's a Mr. Norm car. Yes, if you would, please. It's a Mr. Norm car, and it's rare, and it's worth a bajillion dollars, and it is going to appear in the in-wheel time booth at Autorama this year. So we're really excited about that. And if you're watching uh, on any of the channels, that there it is. Yeah, there it is. And it doesn't, it, it, it's not, it doesn't have a number on the side of it or mm -hmm. advertising or anything like that. It was uh, sold, from what I understand, to a gentleman there uh, in the Chicago area who bought it new and drove it. And that's the way, you know, these are just cars he sold. Yeah. He didn't sell them as race cars. He just sold them as cars, and people turned them into race cars. Right, yeah. and I think Mike said this is, what, 10 of 400 or something? Or yeah, is something an like outrageous that. number like we'll that? We'll find out yeah, about yeah. it. But uh, at any rate, so there you have it. That's what's going to be in the in-wheel time booth this year. And of all the cars that we've had, uh, this is one that I am more excited about than any of the others not that any of the others were anything other than spectacular Less, right i mean i think that the first show i had the corvette in there mm -hmm. my corvette in it. and then the corvair the corvair the corvair was in there we had uh john hovis's uh cuda. Green, was that a cuda yeah. yeah the green cuda had my rally had your rally in there one year and there had was the, another is a yugo or something no, no it was no, no had the cadillac <laughs> truck Yes, yeah, we had the yeah. Cadillac truck. It was spectacular. And then had um, uh, the Buick last year. Yes. Yes. Stan's. Stan's Buick. Stan's. 38 uh, Gangster Special. Yep. So well, we, your we, daughter used that on her uh, departure from the reception on her honeymoon. Yes. Yeah. That's correct. And, it, you know, so we, we've tried to bring something to the table. And this is cool. This is going to attract a lot of attention. I hope so. Yeah, uh, at the booth, just because you know any anybody with Mopar knowledge is definitely going to want to come put their eyes on this car because it's not a car. First off, it's not a car that you see often, a, a true Mister Norm's car. Mm -hmm. I've and never then, seen one that I know of. And, well, yeah, just and, pictures. And from what I understand, once we can get the interview on, there's a great backstory to this specific car uh, that's kind of exciting as well, and uh, you know that'll make it even more interesting to people. I think so too. I don't know what the issue is over there. Well, I but, think it's the could be weather related stuff or something. Yeah, I think we can get the video. I don't think we can get the audio. I think that's what he's struggling with. Is getting okay, the well, audio. Whatever the case may be. Okay. But there's but, the car. Yep. Are we showing more pictures I can, of the car? I can do it Let's again. Let's go through the car again because uh it's a real pretty blue and we're going to have a black curtain behind it and uh, it's going to be uh really cool to have that. I notice car. there's different wheels on it too. Those are the Keystone Classics yeah. versus the the Kreger style. Yeah. That's a nice interior. Look at that. I know. That's a big one. That's yeah. the kind that when you're stopping fast, you put your arm on on the passenger to hold them back. <laughs> to hold them back. Awesome. That's right. <laughs> and look, it's an automatic. Oh, yeah. How about that? I wonder if that's the tack in the top of the dash. Or right, the, the clock the... in the bottom by the yeah. shifter. We'll run through them again. At any rate. That's pretty. We'll, yeah, we'll... But it's but it's a 426 wedge. It's not a 426 Hemi. It's, and the difference is? Um, it doesn't have the spark plug between the valves, the hemispherical heads. Yeah. A wedge uh, evolved as the uh, the 413 and the 426. Um, you know, it's a regular side-by-side -side valves with a spark so plug. So they didn't make a 318 underneath. wedge? Well, oh. th I think 318 would be, or if, not 318, but 383, 383 would be considered a wedge motor as well. Yeah. 
Well, I, I was pretty excited about it. My, Mars and I had been talking about it, and uh, we'd ask somebody else, and now nah, they didn't want to. Yeah, they didn't want to loan out their car, and and, and then then that's fine. I yeah. perfectly understand mm-hmm. that. And then Mars says, you know, I've got this friend of mine that I've known for a long yeah. time. Let me call him. I said, call him, see, because I said that'd be really cool if we could get that. And the guy agreed, so he's going to bring and, it. And over this is the- actually going to be entered in. Yes, it, yes, yeah. it's going to be entered in competition. Well, it was all of them are. I mean, all the ones that have been in the booth in the no. past have been no, entered. No, no, mine was never entered. Okay. No, Mine none of the uh, the only one that was entered was the truck that we had a couple of years ago, and he won his class. No, yeah. he's second place. Second place. Well, it's still place. an award. It is, and that and listen, if you win an award at Autorama, that's something. Mm-hmm. I never won an award at Autorama when I was showing back in the day, mm-hmm. and uh, I was okay with it. Because I got to show my car. At Autorama. At Autorama. Well, it's just the talking point of, I was in Autorama. Well, there's and that. And the other talking point is, I was in Autorama and won. So, so there's two. Most points. definitely. And then the third is, I was in Autorama and won and was in the in-wheel time booth. Yeah. That's even more rare. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. true. It's like getting a hot dog at the hot dog stand on Thanksgiving Day when there are no hot dogs available. None of the food booths are open on Thanksgiving. Tur- yeah, I guess turkey, they, turkey dogs. I assume that they think that everybody has eaten Thanksgiving dinner by the time that they're going to yeah. be there. I made the mistake because I was all ready for a hot dog one Thanksgiving a couple of years ago. Well, that's Went your tradition. Down. When you do that, you get a, you get your coney dog or whatever. You've yeah. always said that. But not that Thanksgiving day. Nothing was open. No food booths were open. Well, the other cool thing is a, a number of the people that work Autora- work for Autorama, they volunteer in the morning to do the uh, or yeah or yeah in the morning well, yes. to do the food giveaway. Well, Larry does. Yeah, yeah Larry. Does, Larry yeah. Me. yeah, yeah. So at any rate, I thought that that was pretty cool, and we're really excited about it. Sorry, sorry, we couldn't talk to Jim, but um, that's just the way that it is sometimes. It's always this way, kind of, sort of, M- many times. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, at any rate, coming up later on in our show. We're going to have an interview with Jason Feldman, who uh, whose dad, uh, Stephen Wolf, makes um, the general manager role over there at uh, Healthman Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram over on the Katy Freeway. There was a story that ran across uh, on Automotive News a couple weeks ago about Houston. The, the headline is headline uh, is Houston dealership police take on fraud and um they'd been ripped off for three hundred thousand dollars each year to customer id fraud oh gosh yeah so you can just imagine what that's about um and the tricks that people use to go in and basically steal a car uh with fake Uh, identity fraud basically identity fraud and the dealership doesn't know because they've got all the stuff there. Well, that ain't happening no well, more. Well, they've got what they think they need, but it's not legit. Right. right. Yeah. So that's pretty ugly. Hey, if you'd like to get in touch with us, shoot us an email. Our address here is info at inwheeltime.com. I know that you have don't over there, to subscribe. Conrad. Yeah. Huh? Subscribe. To or, our feed. Or we'll come get you. Yeah, we'll uh, get to you. Facebook or YouTube. Yeah. Either one of them. Or our website. The podcasts. Or our website. Or uh, time now for the <laughs> events calendar, Conrad. Um, and today, mm, not so much. No. The events calendar is it's raining and a lot of people canceled. But, you know, there's always other stuff going on. Um, I'm wondering, and I didn't call Bill to find out, if uh, they're doing the downtown Bass Drop uh, 17th Annual Heroes and Hot Rods Veterans Day weekend. I would imagine so. Um, because that's a pretty big event over there. They'll have, uh, and right now it's not raining. And, well, yeah, well, there's well, only a thirty percent chance of rain today. But it's still ugly. And it is had, very ugly. Last I heard, he had uh, three hundred registered, four hundred op- um, openings, um, but it was filling up. So you know, four hundred car show is pretty cool. So uh, uh, other things going on. Again, we just talked about uh, at the George R. Brown Convention Center Thanksgiving weekend is Autorama World of Wheels and the Cavalcade of Customs. Uh, we'll be there doing the show live from 
8 to noon, a four-hour broadcast on Saturday. So come on out and say hi and um, enjoy uh, um, the Mr. Norm's car. The Mr. Yeah. Norm's car and uh, Auto Rem in general. Yeah, Auto Rem in general. And then, um, uh, you know, other stuff going on. Um, uh, the fourth annual uh, Memorial Benefits Taps and Turbos Cars. Uh, at No Label Brewing in Katy. Today? Um, well, they were supposed to be, but yeah. I, listen, you know, I'm a car guy. I ain't town, taking you, my car You think everything me. in town canceled? Pretty much. A lot of, you know, the, the site Even I watched. Even football watch. games were canceled last night. Yeah. Monday's going to be a complete washout from what the weatherman says, if you believe the weatherman. There's some kind of little big L floating around out there, and we're all going to, I think Locust is coming, all kinds of stuff. Locust, yeah, that's it. The seven plagues. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But the big thing is put on your calendar Autorama, yep. uh, which is in a couple of weeks, Thanksgiving weekend, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. You'll really enjoy we'll it. will be there. Time now for this hour's car review, and Mr. Mars uh, has the Jeep Compass. Yes, sir. Kona. We had the 2023 Jeep Compass Altitude 4x4. Now, you may not have heard of the Altitude as far as the Compass goes. There's actually five trim levels of the Compass this year. There's the Sport, the Latitude, the Latitude Lux, and the Limited, and the Trailhawk. Now, I say it that way because the Altitude is actually a package off of the Latitude. Much like the high altitude. Sounds like some sort of limited. dance. But it's not really a trip. They don't count it as a trim well, level, but it's listed in parentheses by the trim level. Theoretically, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's the altitude. Anyway, so this is a small crossover SUV. Uh, to me, it's, it's, it's some people consider it a subcompact, but it's really kind of big to me to be a subcompact. It's smaller than the Renegade, but it's larger than the Cherokee, so it kind of fits in between those two in the Jeep lineup. You're going to see that it's got the seven-slot Jeep grille up front. It has a really nice two-tone black and red lime pearl color scheme on it. And it's got black badging, and it's got the black wheels on it. So it's a black and red thing, and, and it really looks sharp, particularly with that red paint on it. Up front, you're going to find the red sensing wipers, LED lighting, fog lights. You're going to find that uh, it's got the cornering headlights on this vehicle, too. You know, So they kind of cock a little bit when you go around the corners. Power lift gate, 18 by 7 inch black wheels. It's a really nice looking combination of, of color that they've done with this. You go into the interior, you're going to find that you've got the black cloth and vinyl seating surfaces. It's kind of a combination there. Got the Uconnect 10.1 inch screen. So that 10 inch screen is really nice and large in the dash of this vehicle. Uh, this is where you're going to find all your convenience controls, your navigation. It's got the 360 degree camera so you can see all the way around it. Got USB ports in the front, and it's got two in the rear seating area, but they're charge only, so that your rear passengers uh, can can charge their devices. Got wireless charging up front, Apple CarPlay, Android. Got all that good electronic stuff. The front seats are heated, and the rear seats, the second row seats, are a 60/40. There is no third row in this vehicle. Something fortunately. tells me that this is not red. No, it's not. But take my word for it; it's a beautiful red car. <laughs> And this one's blue. This one's blue, but they didn't have any red, pictures, red and stock it was raining, and, and I didn't now, get pictures. And here is Mister Mister Photographer over here. Yeah, and I, the rain got me on several things. Yeah, they call that Kona so, Red. So this year for new, it's got a 2.0 liter inline four cylinder that's turbocharged. It's new for this year. 200 horsepower, 221 pound feet of talk, torque. It's got an eight speed automatic transmission, and properly equipped, it will tow 2,000 pounds. Now. The EPA says you should be looking for 24 in the city on the highway 32 and combined at 27 miles per gallon. Now, I drove 376.8 miles. It got 25.8 miles to it, and I was very happy with that considering uh, the way I drove it. Now, it's reported that this will go 0 to 60 in 8.3 seconds. Uh, it is trail rated, that's so what? it's got a firm off-road type ride to it. You know, it's that's part of the Jeep. You don't buy a Jeep to be a sports car. You don't buy it to be a luxury car and, and float down the highway. You buy it because it is a Jeep. And so don't buy it for road handling and things like quartering on a road course because that's just not what this vehicle is made for. It, uh, But I'm sure that you checked it out on the uh, mm-hmm. uh, on-ramp acceleration test well, that you always do. That's how I it's know how, how well it goes there. Uh-huh. So the uh, base model price on Jeep Compass, you can get one of these in the stripper version for twenty nine nine ninety five. So it's slightly under thirty thousand dollars. The base trim price on the one that we had is thirty two thousand six hundred seventy dollars. But 
we had some options. Packages. $41,905 MSRP. Oh. Mm. Now, if you're looking for something to compare this to, you're shopping in this category, the Mazda CX-50 is going to start at $31,675. So it's a little bit more. The Honda CRV is twenty eight fourteen, so it's a little bit less, and the Subaru Forester at twenty six three ninety five is a little bit more or less. But they're all right there in that category, so it kind of depends more or less. on less. <laughs> if you want something that's more geared towards possibly going off road, or if you want something that's a little more for the highway or in town driving. But they're in that same class. I personally think the Compass is a little bit bigger than the other ones. It just feels bigger and looks bigger. I did not get the measuring tape out on it. Uh, obviously, because I, I didn't get the camera out to take the pictures of the red vehicle. But I think it's a little bit bigger, and it's one of the bigger vehicles in that category. Hmm. And that's yeah, my yeah. review of the 2023 Compass. Yeah, when I saw it, I wouldn't put that in the compact SUV segment. I thought no, it was subcompact. Yeah, or subcompact. Yeah, it'd be it was, the compact. Yeah, I thought it was that's where I would, well, I would think it would go. I just call it midsize. It's, just a, it's a tweener. It's a tweener, yeah. but it's not, it's not as big as the midsize. No. And least- when people shop for it, size vehicles you can put whatever label you want on it i like that one and yeah, that's, that's right. what they buy i'll take the I don't red know one anybody none of my kids or anybody else that's ever said i'm gonna go find me a compact suv yeah no i never have either they go out there and they say i like this one and you know but people and buy when, on emotion and when that's they right. have when they have these uh, press junkets that we get to well we used to go on all the time they always tout about the fact that best in class yes in cargo area well, really? By what? Two inches? You'll never be able. No, it's not about it, it, that. It's a way to say something. I mean, it's it's marketing. Yeah. Marketing. That's mm-hmm. the way to put it. Mm-hmm. Hey, this program's available twenty four seven on iHeartRadio. Just check in real time. Car talk. We also video stream on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and inwheeltime dot com. Thirty minute podcasts at your fingertips on over a dozen of the most popular podcast outlets. The In Wheel Time Car Talk Show continues right after this quick break. Houston's finest cars are invited to another Gulf Coast Auto Shield Car Social, Saturday, December 2nd, and you're invited too. Show off your personal pride and joy, or just stop in to see the likes of Lucid, Lamborghini, Porsche, Ferrari, and more. Gulf Coast Auto Shield is your one-stop shop for paint detailing, coatings, window tent, clear bras, and wheel repair. The Car Social is your opportunity to get a tour of this state-of-the-art facility located at 11275 South Sam Houston Parkway, just south of the Southwest Freeway. It all takes place Saturday, December 2nd, 9 to noon. This is the perfect opportunity to connect with other car enthusiasts. From BMWs to Bentleys, Corvettes to McLarens, the Car Social is a different kind of show. Talk to the owners. See Gulf Coast Auto Shields facility. You'll be amazed. Put it on your calendar now. The Gulf Coast Auto Shield Car Social. Saturday, December 2nd, 9 to noon at 11275 South Sam Houston Parkway, just south of the Southwest Freeway. The In Will Time Car Talk Show will be there, too. We'll see you then. Hey, Houston! America's greatest hot rod tradition is back! Thanksgiving weekend! The O'Reilly Auto Parts Autorama! At the George R. Brown Convention Center! Four action-packed days of hot rods, customs, classics, trucks, and performance cars! The ultimate lowrider showcase! Sponsored by Shorty's Hydraulics! See Lone Star Throwdown's texas size truck spread! And don't miss the traditional rod and custom section! Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, see wild, high-flying, freestyle motocross stunt shows! Shop the swap meet and win! Women's World all weekend on the Celebrity Stage, presented by Nick's Auto Repair and Classic Car Restoration. Friday, meet AEW Tag Team Superstars, the Lucha Bros. Saturday, it's Noel G, Hector from the Fast and Furious. Sunday, it's Lou Ferrigno, the original Incredible Hulk, the O'Reilly Auto Parts Autorama. November 23rd through 26th at the George R. Brown Convention Center. Discount tickets at O'Reilly Auto Parts, part of the Summer Racing Equipment Show Car Series. See Autorama.com for more info. The original group of Loopy Tortilla Restaurants will have you telling your family and friends just what the original recipes mean when it comes to the best fajitas in Southeast Texas. Founder Stan Holt invites you to visit the original Loopy Tortilla near I-10 and Highway 6. Here's the original house that inspired the design of all the rest and the original charm that helped make Loopy Tortilla the go-to destination for Houston Tex-Mex. Speaking of original, nothing can compete with the original lime pepper marinade that everyone will agree makes Loopy Tortilla award-winning beef fajitas the best anywhere. Loopy Tortilla Katie is another location that gives you the same quality and service Houstonians have come to expect at Loopy's. It's located just off I-10 of the Grand Parkway at Kingsland Boulevard in Katie. 
Find yourself in Aggie Land? Head to the Loopy Tortilla and College Station, located just around the corner from Kyle Field. It's a great place to enjoy those famous frozen margaritas before or after the game. Headed east to Louisiana? Stop in at the Loopy Tortilla in Beaumont. It twos on I-10. You can't miss it. The original group of Loopy Tortilla restaurants invites you in for the best Tex-Mex anywhere. That's it for this podcast episode of the In Wheel Time Car Show. I'm Don Armstrong, inviting you to join us for our live show every Saturday morning, 8 to 11 a.m. Central on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and our InWheelTime.com website. Podcasts are available on Apple Podcasts.